What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Living in Bremerton podcast. I'm your host, Cassandra Lopez with the Northwest Realtor at Keller Williams West Sound. Glad to have you. Glad to see you. If you're listening in your car, uh, eyes on the road. Okay. So guys, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, it's been a while since I did the last podcast. And although it's not talked about as frequently as it was the first half of the year. I guess technically we're still in the first half of the year for like another couple of weeks. Um, it's mid-June right now. So interest rates. Okay, who's sick of hearing about interest rates? <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, they plateaued a little. So we're like hovering between 6 and 7% depending on who you talk to. Um, and a myriad of other factors like your individual credit score, the type of loan you're getting, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. So interest rates have plateaued, not going down, but not like skyrocketing like they were. They like the increase, the rate of increase, the rate of acceleration, which has always been a funny term to me because acceleration in and of itself is a rate. Anyway, I digress. Um, they haven't shot up as rapidly as they did last year in the first part of this year. So they've plateaued a little, not to say they're gonna come down yet because there's still kind of a bunch of question marks on are interest rates coming down by the end of the year? Is it gonna be this way through Q1 next year? Those are kind of the predictions right now. Um, I don't, quite honestly, you guys, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to that in regards to my individual business because Rates are going to do what they're going to do. People still need to buy and sell homes, and that's what I'm focusing on. Um, I don't subscribe to all of the fear mongering. I don't subscribe to all the scare tactics and the scarcity mindset and all that stuff. Like, we're in a market shift, clearly, right? So all we need to do is pivot, adjust, and move on. That's it, right? So nothing to be scared of. Let's just do it. Anyway, all that to say, inventory is still kind of low. Like we had a really significant bump probably about four weeks ago in inventory, um, which is super common for this time of year because a lot of families who want to move during the summertime and have their kids settled before the school year starts in the fall will start marketing their homes like within, you know, three to four weeks of school getting out. And so that way, um, especially with the longer average days on market. So they market their house, you know, maybe two or three weeks goes by, they get an offer or whatever, they can sell it and move on and have their kids into a new place by school, right? So we did see that bump, which is actually good. That means that people who still need to sell their homes, like they're not concerned with what the market's doing. They're just doing what they need to do, right? Same as you guys, that's what we should all be. That was really good to see because it's sign of a still healthy market, right? Like we're not flatlined, we're not in the tank. Don't listen to any of that stuff. I don't know, okay, so here's the deal though. I don't know with other areas because real estate is very micro. Like everywhere has its little micro climates. Even in Bremerton and Kitsap County, there are some neighborhoods that are super hot and there's some that like sit for a while and that's within our own market. So I get that. I get that it's very localized to where you are. Um, maybe, maybe you're in an area where rents are going down. Here rents are not going down. We can touch on that in a little bit, but it's just, you know, everything's micro and everything's individual and that's just something to keep in mind. So my personal experience as a local market expert here, good to see a bump in inventory. However, it didn't last long. <laughs> like here we are about a month later, four weeks later, and most of that is sold. So we are kind of hovering around between 450 and 475 units countywide for sale. So that includes single family and condos and townhouses. So multifamily is kind of its own little genre. They do have a specific buyer pool looking at those like investors. However, we are starting to see a lot of house hacking. So that's actually really cool. Basically, if you're not familiar with what house hacking is, you buy a duplex, you live in one half of it, you rent out the other, and you have your tenant um, supplement your mortgage. And then, you know, at some point in a year or two years, you do it again. You go buy another multifamily and now rent out fully the first one. Okay, so the idea is not new. It's not new to our area but we're starting to see different segments of the buyer pool taking advantage of that. So we're seeing that more and more, which is really, really cool. It's a good sign that people are educating themselves, they're learning more about how real estate works as a growth vehicle, and they're setting themselves up for long-term success, and I just love to see that. Okay, so back to the inventory thing though, like what I'm personally seeing and what my partner, my business partner, Darren, is seeing, like people are starting to normalize what interest rates are. They're just saying to themselves, okay, they are what they are. If I want to buy a house, this is what it's going to cost me, right? I'm not a, I'm not a huge Dave Ramsey follower, but there are some things that 
I really, really agree with what he says. And one of them is just this. It's like, if you're going to buy a house, then buy the house. Like whatever interest rates you're doing, like who cares? Just buy the house. Because what happens is if rates go up, well, cool. You secured it at a lower rate. If rates go down, well, then you just refinance. But don't let the higher rates stop you from buying a house because you're stopping yourself from getting in the market when you should have gotten in the market. Like when's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. Like we all should have done it, but uh, we didn't. Some did, some didn't. Um, the people who did, they're looking good right now, right? So whatever the market is, that's just where you are. Like you are there, get in the market now, get in the market tomorrow, get in next week, whenever. But let's not wait because what you're doing effectively is you're trying to time the market and timing the market is not a skill set. Timing the market is not a strategy. It's like if you benefit from timing the market, you just got lucky. There was no skill set there. There was no like, I told you so there. Like you just got lucky. No one times the market. And real estate's a long-term hold game. Like you're not gonna, unless you bought in 2020 and sold in 2021, you know, you're not gonna make a whole lot of money. I bought my house in 2017. I like, you know, my DTI on that particular investment is like 50% because of just taking advantage of market appreciation. I have no plans to sell it. I'll probably do a line of credit on it. I want to build an ADU on my property, so I'll probably do that, but I have no plans on selling it. And because I understand that it's a long-term hold and I just want to turn it into a cash vehicle. I'm going to turn it into income producing property for myself. You can do the same thing. Don't worry about what interest rates are doing. Having said that, on the flip side, on the investor side, I did buy a third investment property this year. And uh, if you follow me on the social medias, it, I put it on my Facebook. Um, it was painful. My interest rate's like in the sevens, you guys, because non-owner occupied investment property loans, they're just naturally more expensive. They're a point higher. If interest rates were two and a half right now, I would have paid three and a half, which, which sounds pretty magical, actually. So anyway, my interest rate's like seven and an eighth. It's not amazing. Um, rents, while they're not going down, they're not really going up either. So this is one of the first times since I've been in this market where rents are actually more affordable than mortgages. I know that's a huge argument for people who are screaming high interest rates right now and why they can't do themselves a favor and buy a house. I know also a huge part of that is you're just priced out of the market. And that's just a fact for a lot of people. It's just it's just too expensive. Your, ho your housing payment is going to be too high to comfortably swing it and so you stay in your rental and that I totally get. I, I understand that making ends meet is a priority and I get that. So I'm not, believe me, not hating on any of that because we've all been there. But the fact of the matter is if you can't afford it and you're not doing it, you're who I'm talking to. <laughs> so anyway, um, I got in there the tenant, the tenant had been there for six and a half years. I inherited this tenant. I almost didn't buy I almost didn't buy the unit because the tenant has such a horrible rent roll. But she had six months left on her lease when I took possession. And she asked immediately to be let out of her lease, which I let her out of her lease. You know, just do your thing. I will I'll clean it up and get a get a new tenant in there. So I was walking through the unit after she had moved out, and um, a lot of things become obvious and visible when there's no furniture and no things in there that weren't obvious previously, right? So um, I knew going in that it was gonna need new flooring and new paint, I knew that. So I was already budgeting for those things. Taking a, a closer look at things, I'm like, oh man, these are all original 1984 cabinets and the hinges are getting really loose and oh man, these appliances gotta go. So okay, we're looking at a new appliance package. So basically I just said, you know what, we're just gonna get this and do all of it, like every single thing. Like I'm not gonna patch it up. I'm gonna, it's an all or nothing project. So got new cabinets ordered, those are in, got new countertops, those were measured last week. Um, hard flooring went in, carpets going in next week. My vanities are being delivered tomorrow. It's already repainted. It's looking so good. If you look on my Instagram, um, Bremerton Broker is my at. So if you go to Bremerton Broker on my, on my account, Oh, you know what? I put it on a story. It wasn't a post. I'll have to put it as a post. Um, I put the befores. So all of the, what, the, what it looked like before she moved out. Okay. Like, and then I took some durings, which I haven't posted yet, but it's all torn. It looks like a construction zone in there as it should. Right. And then when it's all buttoned up and clean and shiny, I'll take after. So it'll look really cool. But I'm so excited. But anyway, all that to say is 
I planned on, well, I planned on having a tenant in there through October, let her go early. Then I planned on having a new tenant in there like within 30 days. Um, and then I decided to redo the whole thing. And so now I'm not having a new tenant in there. Probably July 1's pushing it, you guys. It may be mid-July, but we'll see. So um, so that's gonna be exciting. I'm really excited about that. I, I have never done a rehab project like that before. And so I'm learning a lot. Um, I work with a contractor who he and I have done a lot of flips together in regards to like, he does the flip and I help him buy and sell, right? but I've never been a part of the project. And so this is a really good learning experience and learning curve for me. And it actually gives me a lot of firsthand knowledge and experience to be able to share with my clients who want to do that in the future. So, but anyway, it, it'll cash flow barely, it, like probably a, a couple hundred bucks a month, which is really good right now. So for my investors looking for cash flowing properties right now, it's challenging because loans are so expensive. So. The flip side is that the asset is cheap. I got this asset probably 30 to 40% below market value. And it's just one of those deals you can't pass up because that's all I'm ever gonna pay for that. The loan I can change, the loan part, I can I can refi that later and make it cheaper. But the asset part, I'm locked into that for as long as I own the asset. I can't like just choose to tell the bank later, hey, I'm not paying all of my principal. I don't want to, <laughs> like, no, you have to. So finding cash flowing properties is challenging if you're an investor. But then also, if you can stand it to break even, if it's in your financial wheelhouse to break even, or even feed it a hundred bucks a month for six months, and then you refi, would it be worth it? So those are all things to factor in, because I know a lot of investors right now, when you're underwriting the property and you're, and you're crunching the numbers and you're seeing if it's gonna cash flow, a lot of things aren't. Everyone's in the red. It's just a really, really weird time because Mortgages are higher than rents right now. So what's gonna happen when now these new really high normalized, I've been talking about this. You sh I, I did a reel on Instagram um, about this, about how right now if you're a tenant, you're paying 100% interest because interest is a portion of your mortgage that doesn't go to pay down the principal. And as a tenant, you never pay, to pay down the principal ever. That's not your job. That's your landlord's job. So, Right now you're effectively paying 100% interest rate because that's what it's costing you to own this, to, to live in this asset that's not yours, right? If you look at that and compare it to 6% or even seven, like oh, that's that kind of starts making sense, right? Looking at it from that perspective, now that people have normalized these higher interest rates, what's gonna happen when they start coming down? Like say they come down towards the end of this year or Q1 next year, they're, all hell's gonna break loose, you guys. I've I've said this, I keep saying this, I preach this. I'm like, come on, let's get the word out. All Because what's gonna happen is with our already low inventory and now we've got these newly low rate, even if they creep down to like 5.75, which is double what they were two years ago at two and a half, uh, people are gonna, there's gonna be riots in the streets, you guys. We're gonna see bidding wars all over again. We're gonna see people waiving contingencies, inspections, financing, waiving and pay, and willing to pay the farm. This is what cracks me up. Like you won't pay for a high interest rate now, but you're willing to pay like 20% more for a house later. So, I mean, pick your poison, right? Are you gonna pay, pay right now in the short term for a higher interest rate, which you can refinance into a better one later? Or are you gonna hold out and pay way more for a house, which that, that part of your payment can never change. Like you can never not pay that principal. That's what you bought the house for, if that makes sense. Like you can't not pay that. You can't change that. You can change your interest rate, but you can't change whatever. So another factor that, to that is that um, a lot of people who, who bought houses at that two and a half and 3%, they're not wanting to sell right now because if they sell their house and go to buy a new one, we're, they're back at the same dilemma as everybody. They don't want to give up that 3% rate for a seven. Like who would do that, right? So they're all waiting too. So we'll probably have a pretty good turnover as far as um, inventory goes, like when rates come back down. So that'll be really good. However, it's all going to be gobbled up in a second. And we're at about, okay, before all this nonsense started in 2020, when the market went absolutely bonkers, 
we had about between six and 700 units on the market. And so now we have, we're hovering at like 450. So we're already below the inventory mark where we were when all this stuff started. So I dare say buyers will be even worse off because there will be even less to choose from. So that is really, really something to keep in mind. Um, but you, you have to get in the game somewhere. I was talking to these people, um, a few weeks ago who are moving up here from California and they're looking for a rental and I don't facilitate rentals. I can help you like look where to find them, but I don't facilitate them. I only do sales. And so we were chatting and they said, yeah, we, um, we moved here 20 years ago, wherever, wherever they are in California. We moved here 20 years ago and we thought homes were too expensive then. So we didn't buy one. And here they are 20 years later never having owned a single home and now they're way priced out because homes appreciate exponentially and like especially with inflation and stuff like the value of the dollar is less today than it was back then and so they could have bought a house for a hundred thousand dollars and now it's a million of course they can't afford it right your dollar doesn't stretch that far even with your pay raises it just doesn't keep up with inflation um Th that is like the argument, like people argue against the interest rates and then they argue against the home prices and then they argue against the interest rates. And like, cause when the market shifts back and forth and does that, there's always an argument as to why you shouldn't buy if you really don't want to. But if you do want to buy and you want to get in the game, you'll, you'll see that no time is a good time, but no time is a bad time. There's never a bad time to buy real estate. There's always, always a negative to whatever situation you're in, home price is too high, interest rates too high, too much competition, da 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 da, da down the road. Anyway, you guys get my point. So I I, I love helping people uh, buy and sell real estate. That's kind of my passion. I just love it because I can see the the wealth vehicle it can become in the long term. Even in the short term, if you live here for three or four years or five years and you're military and you get transferred elsewhere you can sell that house for a profit and use that to buy a new house down the road. And you didn't have to hold it for 10 years, but now you have this nice little piggy bank to work with. Like, that's awesome, you guys. You can't do that with a rental. You can't do that with military housing. That's just, it's amazing. Speaking of military, anybody getting transferred here from elsewhere? I got a lot of those. I got a lot of reach outs for those. That's pretty cool. So thanks for your service. Appreciate you. Appreciate all you've done and your families. I don't think uh, military spouses get, get the shout out near enough because they certainly serve just as much as their... Uh, military spouses do so thank you for your service as well spouses I see you so um, just keep in mind that if you're coming here and you're you know fresh out of boot camp fresh out of a school and you're a little you want you to God love you you're, you gotta start somewhere right um, some commands and this is how it was when I was active duty so I'm not sure if things have changed but some commands require you to like live on the boat or live on base like if you're if the boats in you know, totally torn apart, not livable, live in the barracks on base. Um, you're restricted from renting an apartment out in town or living with a roommate or whatever out in town for, I don't know, six months or a year, whatever it is. Or sometimes it's even until you reach a certain pay grade, like E3s or whatever. Um, I don't know if that's still the case, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. A car is another big thing that you might want to think about if you're moving here from out of state and you're a little E1, E2, living on the boat. Do you need a car? I just did a video on the, our transportation system and I haven't even posted it yet. My video editor actually just sent it back to me like yesterday. So I have to review it, make sure it looks good. Then I'll post it. But um, I just did a video on this. So you'll want to watch that. But basically we have like such a robust transportation system here all over the county that you could probably get away without having a car for the majority of your stay. Um, if you would rather live in like a super rural kind of out there area like Seabeck or Hansville or um, like some places in South Kitsap, definitely out in Belfair. That's Mason County, that's not Kitsap, but it's still out there. Um, those places are like 100% car dependent. Also, uh, you probably would benefit from some sort of four wheel or all wheel drive because those areas tend to get the first weather and the worst weather. I don't know why, it's just the way the topography and geography is. Um, but if you are living out in those areas like Seabeck and Hansville and stuff, just be prepared. But as far as our transit system go, like we have, there's buses, obviously. 
There's the Kitsap County uh, Fast Ferries. There is the Washington State full-size drive-on ferries, and those all take you to Seattle. And there's lots of locations where those take off from. So um, the state ferries run out of Southworth, Bremerton, Bainbridge Island, and Kingston. The fast ferries run out of Southworth, Bremerton, Bainbridge Island, and Kingston. Yeah, all of them, I think. Yeah, I just did this. I should know this. Um, because they all kind of share dock space, right? And then there's the walk-on ferry from Bremerton to uh, Port of Bremerton, which is actually in Port Orchard, five minutes across Sinclair Inlet. And there's a walk-on foot ferry from Bremerton to Annapolis, which is just a little bit up into Manchester, um, also Port Orchard. But if you're living in Port Orchard and working in Bremerton, like within walking distance of the ferry, this is a fantastic option. So you just walk on, hop off in Bremerton, and the IMF gate's right there. So if you're at PSNS or uh, Naval East Kitsap, you're right there. Um, and then you're in downtown Bremerton otherwise. And so if you have a job kind of proximal to there, or um, it's a transit center for Kitsap Transit buses. And so you just hop a bus and that takes you to wherever. Um, there's a bunch of major transit centers throughout the county. They're building a brand new one in Silverdale right across from the um, St. Michael Hospital, which is um, brand newly redone state-of-the-art facility. It used to be Harrison Silverdale. It used to be a secondary campus in Bremerton called Harrison Bremerton. They combined the campuses in, in terms of manpower and um, facility amenities, and they're going to close down the Bremerton one. I, I think there was talks of turning it into like a VA hospital. I don't think that made the cut. Uh, I have to look up and see what they're doing with that campus. But anyway, the point is St. Michael and Silverdale is huge. We've attracted like a ton of healthcare workers from across the country who are now moving here to work there. And so they're building a transit center across the street from that to accommodate all of those people. All that to say, there's ways to get around if you don't have a car. Um, obviously we have Uber and Lyft, there's regular taxis, there's all the things. Um, so be sure to check out that video. I'll have links for how to how to access all that stuff. So it's pretty cool. So a cool thing I just incorporated with, I just moved back to Keller Williams, if you were unawares. I started my career at Remax in 2013, went to Keller Williams West Sound in 2018, left in 2021, back to Remax, and now I'm back to Keller Williams West Sound because I can't make up my mind, y'all. So uh, back at Keller Williams West Sound, um, and I just affiliated with KW Military, so that's really, really cool. Um, so that gives me resources and access to other agents who are also affiliated with KW Military from across the country and the world, so that if you're a military service member and your family, um, we can connect you with everybody we know here locally, and then everybody wherever you're going to or coming from locally. So it's a very, very easy, seamless transition for you because you know the top three most stressful things in our lives, uh, death, divorce, and moving. <laughs> I, I just think it's, I mean, it's funny, but it's not funny, like how moving made it up there with death and divorce, but um, it's one of the most stressful things. So anything we can do to make it easier for you, we're totally on board. So that's really exciting. Um, so I just affiliated with that and I will be working on becoming our regional um, military ambassador. So that's my next goal. Um, so that, you know, I can, I can do this full time. It'd be great. I mean, I'm already doing it full time real estate, but, um, throw in that military component in there is pretty darn, pretty darn cool. We just had uh, May 20th. We just had our armed forces day parade in Bremerton, which I was unable to attend because it was the same day as my daughter's birthday. So we had plans. So I was not there, unfortunately. Um, but I mean, obviously being a really big military community with a lots of military influence. I mean, that's how Bremerton was founded. Um, it is something that's kind of woven into the fabric of our community. And every time the community grows or shifts or improves or whatever, um, there's always some sort of military support, military influence, and we're really proud of it. And there's a lot of people here, like myself, who were stationed here at some point in their career, and they separated or retired, and they either stayed here or moved back here because it's such a wonderful area. It's kind of a, a little hidden gem. It's 12 miles west of Seattle. It's so close, you guys. Oh, that reminds me. So July 15th, uh, if you're a soccer fan, Seattle Sounders are playing July 15th. It's an evening game. It's a Saturday, uh, 7 p.m. game. So I was invited 
by one of our local lenders who's a military spouse. She coordinated this whole thing uh, for ladies night at the Sounders game, but the invitees either had to be also a military spouse, active duty or veteran or retired or or some way other, you know, affiliated with the military. Um, because we are going to be rolling out the American flag before the game during the national anthem. And I just thought that was so cool. I am just like so looking forward to it, you guys. I'm just I'm so excited. So if you're a soccer fan, be sure to tune into the game. I think we're playing Denver or I have to look that up. Um, if you're not a soccer fan, you should still watch. I'm putting it on, I'll put it on all my socials. It'll be exciting. So anyway, all right, you guys. Hey, if you have any questions or comments or want any video or podcast topics, throw it in the comments of the video. Um, if you're listening to this, I think there's a comment section on SoundCloud as well and wherever else you find your podcasts. I am Cassandra Lopez with the Northwest Realtor, Keller Williams West Sound, your host. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Have a good one.